Someone asked me to explain the rear suspension of the 944, so I'll try to do that now. This is an 84, but it has 86 control arms on it. So these are the rear control arms. These are aluminum. It's a cast aluminum piece. The early cars, the pre-85 and a half cars, have a stamped steel and welded piece here, but it serves the same function. So it's got the shock absorber connection here. It's got a connection here to the, to the torsion bar tube or the torsion bar carrier. So this is a pivot. The other side of the pivot is right here, and I'll talk more about this side in a minute. But it's you know kind of a triangle shape, and it moves up and down, and the shock absorber is, of course, to dampen the movement. And you've got your rear axle with CV joints on each side. The CV joints allow a little bit of lateral movement as they go through their operating range. So as this control arm goes up and down, the distance is going to, the distance of the two CV joints is going to change a little bit, and the CV joints can take up that distance so the axle can keep driving the wheels. So this torsion bar tube, I showed you the shock absorber, but there's no spring. What the spring is, is it's a long metal bar. It goes from about right here to right here. So about two feet long, and it's got splines on the end. Now on this car, you can actually see the splines right here. So this inner piece is the torsion bar. This outer piece has the splines that mate with it, and this outer piece actually goes to this piece of metal right here. This is sometimes called the, the, the spring plate. The torsion bar has splines on each end, and then it's just smooth in the middle. The other end of the splines are engaged right here in the center of this tube. And so what happens when the wheel flexes up and the control arm goes up, it puts a twisting motion in that torsion bar. That's called a torsional spring, and of course it wants to straighten back out. So the more you twist it, the more force that bar absorbs and the more it wants to spring back out. You change your spring rate by changing the diameter of that metal rod. It is also hardened and you know, tempered so it's spring steel and all of that, but it's essentially just a metal rod. Now normally this cap has a little metal piece over the top of it, so you can't see what you see here, which means that if you have to change that torsion bar, or if you have to change the indexing of it, if you want to change where this piece is on the splines, because if you want to change your ride height, you need to have you know this engaged you know, maybe one spline differently, or there's actually a different sp spline count on the inside and the outside of the torsion bar, so maybe you need three splines forward on the inboard side and two splines backwards on the outboard side to get it just at the ride height you want. When that little cap is on the end here, you have to remove this whole assembly from the chassis of the car to, to change those torsion bars. So what I've done is I've taken that cap off and I've just welded on some little nuts here and I have a bolt holding it in place and I actually drilled and tapped the center of the torsion bar so I can put a bolt in there and attach a slide hammer to it and I can slide it out this hole that I've cut in the bodywork. And this allows me to more quickly change the ride height because they don't have to take this whole assembly off the car. So that's, but you know, I have to live with that hole in the, in the rocker panel. So, the spring plate is that, um, is, you know, what gets the spring force from the, the car. And there's two bolts here. These bolts are, one is just a pinch bolt and one is an eccentric bolt. An eccentric bolt is where part of the shaft is not on the same center line as, where the, as the threads are. And in eccentric, when you turn it, it allows some kind of movement. You know, let me get um, an example to show you. Here's an example of an eccentric. This is actually the toe tool, which uh, I'll be showing you in a minute. But it's got this little stub that's off-center from the rest of this. So as this turns, that stub changes its, its location. This is actually going to go in this hole here, and this is your toe adjustment, which I'll get to in a second. So your eccentric here, if we look on the back side, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a very large flat head one that's the rearmost one, and then more of a regular head. The rear one, the flatter large head, is the actual eccentric. So if you loosen both of these up, and if you turn that big head, you can get this slip plate to 
move relative to this this bar, which this bar is really just kind of a hinge. So that allows you a little bit of ride height adjustment. It's really designed by the factory to provide you with corner balancing adjustment um, by providing a little extra preload or less preload on one of the rear wheels. There are people that use that to try to lower the, the rear of the car, but it's not really what it's designed for. If you really want to change your ride height, you're better off focusing on your on indexing your torsion bars. All right, so that's out of the way. This is also an eccentric. We've got three bolts that hold this aluminum casting onto the, the, the spring plate here so that it can get the, the torsion bars force. The rear two are just pinch bolts. This front one on a car with rear sway bars, it is also the bolt for the sway bar drop link right here. If you have a 944 without a rear sway bar, it would just have a flat head here. Anyway, this bolt's an eccentric, and then you can see that there's a hole here that I've put in my, my tool, my toe alignment tool. And you can see that there's uh, an oblong slot here where the, the tip of that tool sticks in, if that's visible. All right, so these two eccentrics, what do they do? These two eccentrics control the camber in the toe of this rear wheel. So you can't tell when this is all bolted together, but on this piece there's actually slots for these three bolts and they allow a little bit of movement from this casting. So the way this works, if this is loose and if I turn this bolt from the head which is on this side, it's going to move the, the casting, the control arm, relative to the slip plate up and down a little bit. All right, and that's gonna change your camber. So if we look at this from the back, we've got a pivot point towards the center of the car. So if we were to raise this a little bit or to lower it, as it would pivot, its angle would change. And so when you give yourself a little bit of negative camber, it actually moves this up a little bit and that tilts the, the wheel in a little bit so that it has a little bit more negative camber. If you look at it directly from the bottom, you also see this triangle position here. So that other adjuster, the, the toe one, it's going to pull this control arm forward or backwards relative to that plate a little bit. Again, if it moves forwards, it's going to bring the toe in because it's pivoting on this side, this side's moving, it's going to start moving in an arc a little bit and you get a little toe in. If it moves backwards, you get a little toe out. So if we can see in here, let the camera focus a minute, you see that slit. When I turn this tool, it's going to move this nub forward or backwards and inside that slot there, it's going to move this aluminum control arm forwards or backwards relative to this. And that's your toe adjustment. And that's about all there is to a 944 rear suspension. Oh, one more thing. So some people will remove the torsion bars altogether and use a coil over shock in the rear. Um, to do that, a lot of times you have to reinforce or you have to use a different rear mounting bolt. This is a 14 millimeter bolt that goes through a rubber bushing. So right now, this shock is on rubber bushings. This shock is, is only to dampen the movement. It's not holding the whole load of the car. So if you put on a coilover spring, most coilover shocks have spherical bushings at the end, you know, monoball bushings. There's no rubber so that there's nothing to deform. And then you need a different mount to accommodate. It's, a, it's usually a half inch uh, monoball bushing. So you need that, but then you're asking this chassis point and this point on the control arm to hold the weight of the vehicle. So you're changing this to a load bearing point where the original design did not have it as a load bearing point. All of the load bearing was happening in this pivot point for the torsion bar. But you know, for a lot of the race cars, we, the coilover is used and it's used successfully. So it's, it shouldn't be a problem, but just be aware of what you're getting into. And then if you, you know, want to change your spring rates, 
you can just undo the shock, take off the spring, and put on a new spring. And also, if you want to corner balance or change your ride height, you can just change the, the threaded collars on the shock.